Hi, welcome to the channel. So in this video series, I'm doing some analysis with the Polar's data frame library. So the idea is to do an RFM analysis. So that's a very commonly used type of analysis in marketing. The idea is to use uh, the recency, frequency, and monetary value of a customer to understand yeah, what kind of customer he is. Is he buying a lot? Is he very engaged? Or is someone you can send the promotion to make him buy again. So um, the idea is to do some simple data pre-processing. So the idea is to do some simple data pre-processing and uh, yeah, make a short analysis. So here I'm doing some filtering, um, making some data date difference, then an, a group buy, and finally I convert the results to pandas. So let me get started. So here I'm loading the libraries I'll be using and I'm reading this file that you can find on this link. So this has um, 67 million rows, so a little bit large file. So we can do the F head and this shows the data set, the raw data. So um, the first step would be to convert this event time timestamp that is string. We need to convert it to a daytime object. So um, you can see here it's a complete timestamp. So we have uh, the date and the times, including the time zone. So, so we need to handle that. And the way to do it is we do the F with column, we select event time uh, as a column, then do str strip time, and then convert it to daytime. So the F FMT means format. So what you need to do is explicit the format of the date here. So this part is generally similar and never, almost never changes. And this is the, the part that takes into account the time zone. So um, we run this, we just update this column, it takes a few seconds because it's a lot of data. Um, so here I have, a um, yeah, the rows of uh, one user. So I'm just doing the F filter and the user ID is equals to this. And I'm just showing how the data looks like. So, but for one user, right? So we have the timestamp that we see this is sorted already or um, no, it's not sorted. So, um, but yeah, I mean, this is more or less the data. So the, the user ID remains the same. So this person made like five uh, purchases, so maybe more, but just selecting five to sample. Um, okay, I'm going to continue. So here I have, um, in order to do this analysis, we first keep the rows that uh, have an event type equal to purchase. So, and this is, uh, yeah, 916, yeah, almost 1 million rows. Um, so now we have the purchases. Um, so then I select these columns, event time, user ID, and price, and I keep the unique uh, rows. And here we, we draw up a few rows that were duplicated. Um, just a sanity check. Um, and these are the the rows we'll be using for this analysis. So the event time, the user ID, and the price. Here I can, uh, yeah, I, I'm loading this daytime uh, function and I'm defining this anchor date. So this is the last date of the data set. Um, and the idea is to compute the time difference. So uh, I use this DF purchases with columns and I modify this date. So I do anchor date minus the event time. So that gives me a, what I'm calling date diff here. Um, and then you have to divide it by, uh, yeah, some numbers that convert it to a day. So this is not very well documented, or at least I, it wasn't very clear to me. So I just tried a few values and I found that this is to convert it to seconds, I think. And this, if you keep this, converts it to hours and this converts it to days. So if you do this, 
you get this time difference. So 28 days for uh, this, that makes sense, almost 30 days, and it, it decreases here. So this is a float representation of the time since from comparing the, this anchor date that I defined and the column event time. So this will be used to compute the recency. And this is the group by example that I wanted to show. So we have this data frame here. Um, so I group by user ID. And this is the expression I compute for each user ID. So I want the, the minimum uh, value of the diff and the count, so the number of purchases, and then the total price paid, so the, how much this user spent. So, I mean, we can see that this is really fast. I mean, just going to time it. And yeah, it should take like one second. Yeah, yeah, less than one second. So really, really fast. Um, so then this has, um, yeah, 441,000 rows. And this is how it looks like. So we have now we have one row for each user ID. And these are the values that correspond to the month that we're using for the analysis. So we have the recency, um, that is the, the date difference since the user made a purchase and compared to the compared to the anchor date. Then we have the frequency, that's the number of purchases the user made, and then the monetary value, how much they spent. And in order to continue the analysis, you could convert this to pandas. And here I'm doing some uh, computing the deciles. So for each of these columns, I define these values as breaks, that is just growing from 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is just the list. And I can use the, the quantile function in pandas. So now I move to pandas. Um, but I think pandas people are more familiar with, so this should be easier to follow. Um, so I personally prefer this table result. This gives me a clear idea of what this data looks like, because I can look at the 0 0.5, that's the median. And I can see that the median is 12 days. The frequency is one. So uh, not a lot of repurchases from the users. And the monetary, the medium monetary value is 246. So if you would plot, let's say we grab this uh, monetary and we make a histogram, it, won't, it wouldn't be very clear um, in the histogram because we have these very high values here. So that's why this tabular uh, result makes it very easy. So another way you can you can do this is um, you can define the breaks as you would in uh, as you would see in a box plot. So this is also another way to to look at it. And here we have the center of the distribution between the twenty fifth percentile and the 75th percentile. And yeah, this gives me an idea that uh, the center of the distribution in terms of the monetary value of the customers is between 108 and 616. Um, and they generally make one or two purchases, not more, which kind of makes sense for an e-commerce website. Maybe you make one or two purchases a month. I don't know. Depends really on the the country or the the, the, the yeah uh, where I live that makes sense. So yeah, I I hope you enjoy this analysis of polars. So we did some uh, recency, frequency, monetary value analysis with uh, real uh, e-commerce website logs. So this is really interesting data to work with. I hope you enjoy the video.